All right, today's little treatment series session is actually on my shoulder where I've got problems going on that shoulder. And there's two problems I've got. One, I've got a rotator cuff tear in there, which is healing and getting stronger. The second problem and the bigger problem is I've got a bicep tendon issue going on in the front. Now that's developed because of the tear that happened in my supraspinatus. So this is for people who have got or had bicep tendon issues. Now that may be a tendinopathy, a tendonitis or a tenosynovitis and I'll explain those three. Most of them happen after a rotator cuff issue like mine. So it's pretty classic textbook stuff. I'm going to show you some exercises to do and some stretches to do to help you through the healing process and the rehab process. So first up, the bicep tendon issue. So the tendon running from, this is the long head of bicep running through from the top of the shoulder, the labrum, through into the bicep muscle. In mine, it's inflamed, okay? So inside the tendon, there's a bit of inflammation, there's a bit of weakness, that's the tendinopathy part. So because it's been painful for so long, and I haven't been able to use it, it's been weak and it's getting weaker and weaker and weaker and we're trying to pick it up and get it stronger. Now, when it's really sore, it's really hard to strengthen. That's why I'm gonna show you some things to do today to get you through that. Um, the tenosynovitis part is where the tendon is running through the sheath and the actual inside around that tendon is swollen too and that, that gets really sticky and gungy. So these are the sort of symptoms when you wake up in the morning it's really tight and sore, so you sort of have to move your arm. Once you get going and start moving around, have a shower, it's freed up, gets looser, gets better through the day. But it can't handle load because of the tendinopathy part, so it's really weak, really sore. And if you load it too much by conventional training, it tends to blow it up, swell it up, and then you get all swollen, and then it stiffens up and the process starts again. And a lot of people have to have cortisone shots around that and cortisone shots in the bursa to try and settle that inflammation down so they can actually train. Now, if you're one of those people that needs to get the strengthening part started now, here's some tips. So, first thing I like doing is warming the shoulder up by doing a classic extension part. Now, this is, I'll just briefly show you this one. When you do the extension, this is pulling back. Now, this is trying to switch on muscles here, okay, and it's trying to warm up that tendon. We're actually moving that tendon, but we're not using it, okay, so I'm just moving that tendon, trying to get it warmed up. Now, that's what I do to start with, because remember, these tendons are sore, they're a bit stiff, so actually loosening them up and getting the tendon sliding through the sheath is a really good start, okay, so that's what I would start working on. Of course, I'm working on external rotation for my rotator cuff tear. I can't go above head and do it up there yet because of my bicep problem. So we have to work on the bicep tendon first, problem first, then I can work on my other rotator cuff stuff. So it's a bit complicated, but here we go. So what I get people doing is what I call a front sprinter. So you imagine Usain Bolt sprinting along, there's a front sprinter. Now for this sort of thing, you can have it up high or down low. I would start up high first because the load is less. And I'll show you inside when you have it down low the load's a bit harder. But what you do, or what you don't want to do, is lift straight up like a front raise. That's going to kill it. So what you've got to try and do is shorten your lever. Okay, so the leverage is only here. Instead of being there, shorten the lever to there, and then do it eccentrically, meaning you're going to lift it up and help it up, and then you're going to load down. Now, the their point there, you may feel it, so you've got to go really slowly and carefully, okay? And then bring it back up again, reset. Now make sure your shoulder's back when you do it. Don't have your shoulder forward, because it's going to load you up. Have it back, and then slowly down, carefully at the bottom where the load is, where that ten really feel that tendon, and away you go again. Now like I said, having that right back at that point of my shoulder height, or just about my shoulder height, it's a light load, it's not too hard. Once you've warmed it up, then you can drop it down. I wouldn't start it straight away down, but always eccentric for this phase. Don't try and do it concentric, there's no point. It's just too much load, it'll hurt. You better to start off eccentric, get a base amount of strength built up over a few weeks, then you can go obviously concentric and lift it up. At that point, you might be able to start doing you know, little push-ups, that sort of thing. You'll probably find all the pulling work is not too bad. I'll show you how much easier it is to do pulling work than it is to lifting forward work where you're directly using that tendon by itself. So that's your front sprint, sprinter with a band, eccentric. Now while you've got it, what you want to do is work on your side sprinter as well, which is basically that lateral one here and coming up. Now I would do this eccentrically because remember you've got a tendonopathy in there, it's weak, so 
lifting it up, making sure when you get to that point there, that forearm is vertical. And then when you come down, you pivot at this point here, keeping that shoulder blade back. So my load is in my rotator cuff now. Okay, it's not so much in the front of the tendon. So lifting up and then slowly controlling that back. Again, I've got a short lever here. Now this is less load in the front than I did with the front sprinter. The load is in the back, but you need both parts. You need the back of it working to help out the front. So I like doing this one as a little superset between the front sprinter because it doesn't blow it out too much. Okay, so those are my first two little ones that you need to work on and it helps warm up that tendon. We're trying to glide that tendon through the sheath. We're trying to get a little bit of eccentric load through it um, and start warming it up. Okay, now be careful with this stuff. You start warming up a tendon, it starts feeling great and then you load it up too much and then have a problem at night. So make sure you keep everything low level no matter how good you start feeling, keep it low level until the next day and see how you recover, okay? So there are your first two. Now let's show you inside what I mean by the other ones. If you have the tendon down low on a hook, okay, this is where you can start advancing it. So at this point here, same jewel for the front sprinter, okay, I would have this short lever and then pulling up helping it up and then trying to lower it down and you'll notice there's a slight increase in load especially there I can just feel it that one there and you've got to be careful don't let the pain get too much if you start getting too painful you know past a three or four out of ten that's going to create some hypersensitivity and it's going to get too sore and you won't know whether it's sore from you loading it up too much and you've inflamed it or just being hypersensitive regardless you're not going to do much the next day so that sort of movement. And remember, this stuff it has to be sort of daily, so it needs to be that low-level load that you can handle it daily. So there's your front sprinter, like that, with a bottom load, which is hard. Now, of course, that's a red band. You can go heavier to a green when you graduate and get harder with that. So those are my first two.